cloud. Make sure that's going well. Okay, it is now recording. I'm so excited. So if y'all don't know Sonia Greenfield, um, she is right here and I'm going to make you the spotlight video. And I want to remind everybody to go ahead and mute as we go into Sonia's reading. Um, like I usually do, I do a very brief introduction and I more like to say um, just something about um, just general and that's why I put the bio in the chat section. But if you haven't seen Sonia read before, you're in for a treat. Um, I like the way your poems move and I love the ones that you read for Wednesday Night Poetry. And on that note, I'm gonna turn it over and I also wanna say that her mom is here and I just love that. It just makes me feel very happy um, to have both of y'all here on Thank our you. Thursday book launch. All yours. Thank you. Um, thank you, Malika, for letting me be a reader. I really appreciate it. Um, so I am going to read uh, from Let Down, and I'll just show it to you. I don't know if it looks backwards to y'all, but um, it came out in uh, March 31st. And just to give you some context for the book, it's all numbered prose poems like this, right? Um, and so, the, and they don't have titles. So in some ways, it's like one long. Um, poem, right? Um, you know, Malika, I forgot to ask how long I should read for. And I want to make sure that I've got We would that. love it if you'd read for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. And then, you know, it may even be that people ask for more, but we, I definitely want to leave time for question and answers. For, for because sure. I found that this is a very active group that wants to know about your process. And I'm sure already they have questions about your approach to creating that book. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So I guess um, one of the things that I wanted to say is that I'm um, probably going to read mostly through and not do introductions before each piece because it's sort of meant to be like one long poem and I don't necessarily want to disrupt the flow and I want you to get a sense for the narrative arc of the book and um, the book is sort of about my own particular experience with parenthood with uh, motherhood and about some of the things that um, made it difficult for me, um, uh, secondary infertility, not being able to have a second child, and um, having a son with special needs. So uh, that just gives you a little bit of context, and I'll just go ahead and launch into it. And I'm going to start with number four. I want to describe it, to tell the whole story but the birthing suite and its muted walls were details lost in rage. And the Joni Mitchell I played, the candy of her voice, could not be heard over my retching. That all the ways I thought I had prepared were like closing a sliding door on a tsunami. That I couldn't listen to myself whimper anymore, the anesthesiologist floating to me like a goddess in institutional blue while I leaned over trembling as the thick, blissful needle slipped deep into my back while I hugged the ball of you. How this is the point where what was should overlay on top of what should have been. That your heart decelerated, machines binged, and your father fetched the nurse. That nurses and doctor rocked my dead legs back and forth to dislodge you that I had to push you out before full dilation, my cervix tearing, and the doctor was stitching for so long, and you, glistening violet, looked me in the face, and the minute you latched on, I became remade in your image, that I would have liked to do it again, but by the time it was possible, I couldn't. So my mom was actually there, so that's pretty funny to, <laughs> to read that piece. My mom's like, I were probably like, I remember that. I almost fainted. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna jump to number 11. Anaphylaxis. The kebab eaters dripped yogurt sauce on their pants and tipped their heads back with a laugh, their teeth flashing in the rare Seattle sunlight. 
which also glinted on sea glass and china embedded in the patio, and the gelato shop scooped its scoops while the statue of Lenin judged how we were capitalizing on a good neighborhood spot to people watch. Lebanese music, a lantern of warmth. Everything was drenched with gold, so we were surprised when your face swelled shut. No paper clip in an outlet, no vicious dog on the loose, just sesame flavoring falafel we shared with your toddler mouth, and suddenly death lurked wearing all white, was a waxen teardrop, a little seed that can fit on the head of a pin. Your eyelids smothered your eyes and your lips were blisters. Tahini's one-two punch. This uh, book has a lot of uh, up and down uh, um, emotional stuff. So some of them are gonna be, you know, happy pieces, right? Number 18. We search the spring for carnivals and find St. Charles in Toluca Lake. So we go as if we could drive by all those neon rides etching their geometry onto the sky. Dirt on our feet, a shattered rainbow of raffle tickets, confetti the ground, and kitty cars turn you in tight circles twice, punctuating your dusk with delight. It could be 30 years ago, teens in crop tops, goldfish in plastic bags, ribbed beer cups in the hands of red-faced men who clearly need a drink. A hotel band does its best with oldies as grannies toe tap to all shook up. Missing are hot zeppelis in greasy bags and the Virgin Mary pinned with dollars. Otherwise, I could be you again. Wind pressing your eyes closed, mosquito bites big as quarters, the flying swings spinning your heart out on a chain. Because sparking the sky with chromatic rain. Twenty-two. Joy is pocket-sized, like quarter rides. We could ignore the patina of grime on the pagodas in Chinatown, where dusk dropped wet against the steamed window of the dumpling shop, which was one bead on a string that went herb shop, gold Buddha shop, bonsai shop, repeat, until pinwheels in the pinwheel store turned to the breeze and you said, bye wind, then blue kisses I tried to catch. I carried pockets so full of quarters. We jingled as we headed past the koi fountain, teeming with ghost fish, past the old smoking man, past lanterns, sunburned red to pink, to the plaza where paint flecked rides bucked against the gloom. And we paid again and again until the mechanical frog churned and galloped you all the way past believing we would ever find ourselves empty handed. Number 23, EEG creation date, 15, 29, 39, August 23rd, 2012. I think the brain is rivers of electricity, is cities of electricity, that it looks like a metropolis from an airplane. Your electricity is learning new routes, like how to work around glioses, little scars, little scares. Your EEG is a paper of squiggly lines, a code, each line telling the story of impulses, some lines quivering with uncertainty. In the office, I said, look, now you get to become a robot as the tech gelled wires to your head. I said, look, you are a handsome sheik who must be still with a white sheet wrapped around 
multicolored wires plugged into a silver box with a heavy cord leading to a computer that wrote 31 lines about your brain. I said, look, the computer just wrote a poem about your legs and how they have a mind of their own. I said, let's be like robots. I said, don't move now. I said, okay, tell me how old you are again. You said, free. That's right, free. Jumping ahead, here we go. I wanna make sure that I, I don't wanna go over in my time, okay. Number 47. Deja vu was the same bright red gem of blood on the toilet paper, the same profound cramping, the same newsletter saying my fetus was the size of a poppy seed. So early, such an ovum is just a whisper of maybe. One can barely call it a miscarry when what is carried is just a speck of desire embedded in blood. That night, you curled in the dark of your bed as my face glowed by computer light. I haunted websites for grieving mothers and clicked on pictures of lost children to let mourning sicken me, to make me wretch, to let it draw out every last clot. Those babies belong to others, but I have no faces for what I lost. So I co-opted eyes and smiles frozen in photo time. Eyes and smiles, not mine. All right, I will read um, two more pieces. Oh, no, actually, I'm sorry. There's one where I have to let my son speak to you. Number 54. You say, I don't want to calm down. I want to calm up. And I say, I need you to be patient. And you say, being patient is not available. You say, I'm upset because my other nostril ran out of batteries. I say, you're cute and I love you. And you say, I'm cute and I love you too. You say, when I grow up to be a flying pest, I'm going to guard your apples. You say, when I was a baby, I had cutie marks. And I say, and now you have beauty marks. And you say, I have beauty marks because I'm beautiful. You say, I coughed up my tummy. You say, does this splinter make me look fat? I ask, what do you want for breakfast? And you say, I want silver linings for breakfast. I say, I love you. And then I ask, don't you want to say I love you too? And you say, I'm loading, mama. You have to wait. You say, mama, I want to drink a case of you. Okay. <clears throat> Number 61. All those years adrift in our spaceship, with its weird silvery angles and odd pinging. But now this therapy office where we have landed feels a little like your home planet. How good it is to be surrounded by creatures who look just like jostling boys drawing math figures onto the air as if it were a plane of paper and their fingers were markers made of magic. When the front door to this lobby closes with a quiet click. You twitch your way in and grab a wand from your pocket. Well, not a wand, really, but a stick of lightning to trace constellations on the ceiling. Well, not a stick either, to be honest, but a mind that makes these things out of dendrites and synapses, while the rest of us from the duller part of Earth act like we're the clever ones. 
Okay, I'm going to finish with number 62. The mother of the adult autistic child who lives with her is ready to offer me advice in the ladies' room where I am cornered against the whir of hand dryers. Another sends me messages with names of advocates and stories of her own son's violence. I deflect thinking you are not like them, just as they must have denied mothers of boys with no words who must have denied mothers pushing sons in wheelchairs through the doors of the neurologist's office. Then at the 4th of July carnival, you, a misfire sparking against the night, your energy all wrong. There is the mother of the typical boy who offers me a look to say, I'm sorry, but I interpret it as something to be slapped off her face. It takes a while to strip expectations away, to peel off the layers until we're holding our child's happiness in the palm of our hand, as pure as the simplest silicate mineral, and to then say it is enough. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, if you want to unmute, you can. Oh, Sonia, that was just gorgeous. I, I, oh, I, Sonia, that was so beautiful. Wow. Oh, my God. That was amazing. Wow. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> I was trying to, I kept writing down, this one's my favorite one, but I finally think a 54, but then I, I probably would change my mind again. And, and I know you can't see the chat, but it was just uh, amazing to see people choose some of the same lines and have the same phrases and one word kept coming up over and over again Sonia which was the, the the truth and the tenderness tenderness being the the word that kept showing back up just that beautiful tenderness uh, and then Karen wrote I must have these poems <laughs> so much truth and feeling and love and tenderness um and people were quite yes from Karen I love the fluid feeling of these poems they flow from one to the next and, and that was something that I was really noticing is that a lot of prose poems don't have that musicality, but yours do. I mean, they just, they really have a, a lovely musicality to them. And I think that's very masterful. Um, yeah. A whisper of maybe little scars, little scares. Uh, number 18, uh, utterly masterful is what Annie wrote. Um, Thank you, friends. It was just gorgeous. So I know people have questions. Just jump in. I didn't see any in the chat section. I mainly saw a bunch of praise. So I'll send that to you. Thank you. I really love 54. That was, I mean, yes. they were all amazing, but that really hit me. With her son speaking. One before 61. I guess Malikia said it was 54. I forgot the title. So I was going to say the one before 61. And then she said 54. So the one with your son about silver lining and uh yeah. that one was great <laughs> yeah he he said some pretty funny things when he was little i saw one the other day i can't because i every once in a while i used to post the crazy funny sweet things he would say on facebook and then they'll pop up as memories every once in a while and i'll be like oh yeah that was a funny one <laughs> I was thinking, you know, um, the what to expect when you're expecting and then the what to expect the toddler years and just how I really don't like those books. And I would have much preferred a book like yours um, mm. that has, you know, these real level experiences. And, and also as someone who has a child who, you know, has epilepsy and, and a speech apraxia delay, you know, a delay and had speech therapy it would have just been uh, so much better than these unrealistic expectations of uh, how things go. You know, how yeah, things go. there's a lot of us out there who are um, negotiating a different path when it comes to um, parenthood, um, negotiating a different path when it comes to um, desired parenthood. You know, there are so many people out there in the world who uh, you, you know, one of the things that my experience has taught me is that um, gratitude is a lifelong practice. It's something like yoga where you just have to keep working on it all the time. 
and I feel very grateful for what I have, even um, when I think about the things that I didn't get to have, right? And I'm grateful for my son, even though many days he drives me up the wall, you know? Now he, he likes to just sort of talk at me about everything from um, Pokemon to the way wounds heal to um, various marine biology facts. He just, he's like a constant, uh, you know, open, open sieve of whether I want that information or not. <laughs> It's a constant lesson. Well, that's one of the things that sh in, in 54, even though it was your son speaking and we get to hear his voice, for me, it was um, your navigation and interaction with his voice that I found so lovely. I, I loved his, his thoughts and his ideas, but I also loved the movement between you two. For me, that's what I wanted to, to like look at again that I, that I really enjoyed. There was such a a beauty, a showing up and, and seeing somebody as they are in that moment and going on that trip, even if it's not one that you set out to be on. Mm -hmm. um, there was something lovely about that continually showing up again as the parent. Yeah, thanks. I love that part. Um, yeah, that's, so a lot of other people, I'm going to go through some of the questions to make sure, I mean, some of the, Okay, so Christy loved Candy of her voice. That's the Joni Mitchell. And then listening, listening, glistening Violet, I think it was, but it says listening Violet. Um, Sorry, the sky with chromatic rain and joy is pocket size. <clears throat> I loved that. Because um, we tend to think of joy as something big and I, I love the portability of joy in, the, in that poem. That's lovely. Well, I think we have, we're foolish if we think that joy is like a giant, it's like this, you know, every time one experiences joy, it's a, gotta be some earth moving experience, but I don't think it is. I think it's small moments of um, very intense feelings of happiness, right? Uh, Karen wrote, I, read, I love the fluid feelings of these poems, how they flow from one to the next. It's just beautiful. Christy loved Calm Up. <laughs> Not surprised, Christy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, when Dexter, my son's name is Dexter, when he was uh, younger, he was really like wound tight and super impulsive. Um, so like the, the idea of him ever like actually being able to chill he's pretty ch he's chilled out a lot but but yeah like you know i don't even know what good it was for me to say you need to calm down because it's like i am physically unable to calm down so <laughs> <laughs> well i like how a lot of our kids that are um you know uh, more divergent or diverse um neurodiverse that will say things like turn things on their heads and and like calm up is one of those ones that makes sense to me it's something my my daughter would very much uh, appeal to her um mm -hmm. karen has a really good question can you talk about like how you went about writing these poems and how did you select what you chose for the collection yeah sure so a lot of this I mean, each of these pieces, it was written piecemeal, right? Each, each of the pieces was, I was experiencing something. I'm going to write about the thing that I'm experiencing. Um, and some of the stuff that I wrote in this book was um, therapeutic for myself. Like I needed to work through a lot of the stuff that I was um, going through. And as I started um, accumulating these pieces, I started to see, well, okay, here's a, there's a narrative here that need, that needs to be told. Um, and so then I started assemb it, it, sort of assembling the, the book. And even some of the pieces started out as um, lineated poems. Mm -hmm. So then I spent a little time, I really spent a little time with this book, um, figuring out what the form of it was gonna be. Um, and because I wanted it to be sort of hybrid poetry and memoir, mm -hmm. that's where the prose poem really felt like that sweet spot for the, um, each of the pieces. Um, 
Yeah. And so as far as selecting what went into the book, it was basically like <clears throat> everything about my experience with secondary infertility and miscarriage and everything about um, my son's um, diagnosis and um, like all the stuff that I wrote um, to him when, when, I, when I was younger or wrote about him. And then you might have noticed that everything was addressed to the you, right? So this, almost all of the poems talk to my son and that concept was, um, let me make this book for him someday, for him to understand what was going on in my life at this particular time. Um, so that's how it ended up. You know, they didn't all start out addressing him. That was me going back in and like tinkering. So, you know, there were all these pieces and then I had to tinker with the book and um, make those changes so that it would all hang together. If that, I hope that answers your question. That was a great answer. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. I, it, it's working. You did a really good job. It's ama those are amazing poems. I, I must have the book. Is the, is the way to buy it on your website, Sonia, or do we need to do something else to get it? Um, I mean, you, usually I'm just like, oh, just go order it from wherever you want to order it from. If you have a local bookstore or someplace that you'd like to um, give your money to as far as supporting a, a small business or something like that, I encourage you to go ahead and do that. Um, if you want to re reach out to me after this, I've got some of them down there on my shelf that I could probably send you one with signed if you want. Um, so if you want to uh, reach out to me about that, then, um, then yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, let me just go ahead and reach out to me and, and we can, we can arrange okay. That's perfect. That's what I was thinking, Sonia, is usually people want to come directly to you as the poet and that way they get a signature. So that's fantastic. Thanks, Karen, for asking that. Yeah. So are you going to put your information there? Because in point of fact, I, I went to your website briskly and all it wanted me to do is go to Amazon, which I am the anti Amazon. I will not buy it. Sure. From Amazon. So but it was link. It's, you know, uh, it's weird. My publisher like uses Amazon. So, yeah. so I mean, maybe just... that's not all there was, but that's what came up. And so I just wanted to have a different option. Oh, use your email. Okay. That's Perfectly good. I'm going to copy that right this minute, um, okay. and you will hear from me forthwith. Okay, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, Grant has said, "Lovely reading." I have to go, but we'll order the book tonight. So Thanks, I Grant. A little message there. So, if you didn't already know, check the um, check the chat section so that you can reach out directly to Sonia and um, get your copy and signed at that, which is even better. Um, all right, so that was a great question, Karen. And that, you know, I always want to know the process. I'm always curious how you go back. And I like the idea that at some point that that is um, really kind of a love letter to your son mm -hmm. about That's those. Yeah. I wanted to say hi to your mom and say, how is it to hear her read these poems? Is she still here? Did we? Yeah, I see her. Oh, there I see you. Hi, Elaine. She's got to unmute. I'm here. For me, it's kind of hard because it's it's so close to the heart for me. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of painful at times to hear it because I because she's my daughter and that's my grandson and I I know what she's gone through and it's it's painful to hear it, you know. But he's such a wonderful boy, though. He really mm -hmm. is, and he looks just like her. He's her mini me for sure. <laughs> It really is. There's no doubt about it. None at all. Show that picture. Oh, yay. Let's go to the spotlight again. That's awesome. Look at that he smile. Looks, that's for not even face. a good picture of him. That, it, see him though? He looks <laughs> just like her. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, yeah. See awesome. that? Isn't that something? Yeah. <laughs> but he's a great kid. And she's yeah. a wonderful mother. Thanks, Mom. I'm very proud of her. And I also got my own signed copy. She wanted to give it to me for free, but I said, no way. No way. No. Nope. That's I beautiful. Be. That's right. 
Thank but you. Sister Monterey, my um, daughter had said that she was going to sell ice cream. You know, that's what she wanted to do when she was, you know, grew up and uh, she would sell ice cream and, and everybody else could get a discount, but she would charge me double. I was like, that sounds, <laughs> she said, because you never let me have ice cream after dinner. And I was like, no, we're not having it every single time. So that was the solution. That is <laughs> Lovely to hear that, Elaine, though I like having uh, the generations here. That, and it has to be a challenge as the mom um, to see your daughter navigate this, but to, to watch her navigate it with such grace uh, and skill, and then also offer, I don't know, like it's not just hope, but I, something about um, the grace of how to show up in a life uh, and how to have that gratitude that it's not something we get once and one and done. It's an ongoing way of being in the world. And that's kind of what your poems embrace to me is this ongoing showing up. And, and that is challenging and, it, and, it, and we do hit robots and we do have days that that doesn't feel good. But I love that your poems have this kind of a hopeful willfulness, <laughs> hopeful stubbornness to keep showing up. So that's just lovely. Yeah, and you know, there are some days where I can be a resentful, jerk or whatever but you know gotta push through that right gratitude is a practice like i say if you don't if you <laughs> if you do yoga as you as you do and you and you're getting good at doing uh headstands or whatever if you stop practicing at it then you stop being able to do it right so it's the same thing for gratitude I feel like. well and and also, it just reminded me, I read into the chat, um, Joan had written to you about the neurotypical child she has and how she had never really thought about writing poems. And, and then um, Sonia said, there's an audience that needs those poems. And, and I would say that, you know, obviously that's one of the things that you've really resonated with is people need your poems. And I think that's what you're seeing here in, in this chat section is that these poems really speak to a whole group of us. So thank you for that. Do y'all want to hear one more poem if there's not any questions? Because I would love to hear another one. And then also yes. you promised us a picture of this cake. So I still want that cake. Oh, please. Sure. All right. I have to try and find the picture though. Oh, okay. one more. Can I say something real fast? Sure. Um, Elaine, your mom, is it Elaine? Is it pronounced Elaine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. She, like when she was just talking, she made me start crying. That was so beautiful. Like, Thank like you. I almost had to go off screen, um, like mute my camera or whatever. But I just want to say that was that was really that really got to me. It was really warm and 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 sweet and and so yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody gets to hear a tender moment between me and my mom. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm trying to find, because I did mark a couple that I ended up not reading, right? So, because I didn't want to. Oh, okay, uh, no, not that one, <laughs> sorry. I'm trying, I'm like, I'm trying to find one that's not a super bummer because I don't want to um, like go, oh, sure, I'll read one more here. Let me read one that's awful, but maybe I'm going to do that anyway. Okay, number 45. Today's paper reports that a woman rolled her 10-month-old stroller onto a subway platform and left on the northbound train. She must have struggled down those stairs from the street. I've asked strangers to take the foot end as we hefted your weight down into the darkness. Those arterial transit ways of the metropolis never meant for mothers with babies in prams. How she must have wanted to be done with her daughter's hungry mouth. Those ever grasping hands, no doubt dimpled at the knuckles, still full cheeked in her infancy. And just a news report ago, a father left his son in the oven of his car, the Atlanta sun baking, baking, baking. So we mourn, moving on to the next abandonment. 
And in other news, I bled again this month. The ticking slowed to a near stop, time dripping into the bucket of my own infertility. No more babies for me. This news personal, this news that breaks hearts, this news again about who has, has not, or God forbid, didn't want. Mm. Um. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Don't apologize. That one, was, no. that one was supposed to fall in between the two cheerful ones um, in, the, in the book. And then I was like, oh, well, I was going to read that one. Let me read that. So sorry about that. It was so powerful to hear. And, and I, I think it is impossible not to connect with that. Yeah. And, you know, that who has, who doesn't have, and who doesn't want. That's huge. Uh, Paul was saying he's uh, leaving. Oh, thanks for bringing us deep and complex poems. See, and I think that's exactly yeah. that poem to end on, uh, you know, because that is very true. I, I like that you're willing to go in deep, that you're willing to go in complex and not have the easy out or the easy uh, light to it, because I, I think that that's honest. It's, it's not an easy thread. It's not an easy walk. Agree. Agree. So thank you for that. Uh, Annie, you're, that's resonating? Absolutely. They would not be one-tenth as effective if they were if they were staying on the surface and not going to the depths that they go to. Mm -hmm. I, you read some of these in, in, in at uh, AWP in, in San Antonio, and I'm glad I heard some different ones today and that I'm going to get to have them all. But um, I was impressed then, and I'm even more impressed today. So thank you for this. Thank you. There's a level of courage there that's admirable. Yeah, is, uh, you know, I think what Annie is, it sounds like what you're saying, and, and there is, and there's also, you know, of course, the, the, the craft and the skill, but there's also a, a personal courage that's really amazing. I th it, and it's really that combination for me is Sonia's bravery and sharing these combined with her talent and skill. I, I work with uh, a nonprofit preschool for children with special needs, especially um, neurodivergent children and children with medical um, fragility and you know so many there are so many parents out there and it's you know it's all they can do to the day-to-day -day and to advocate for their children and to you know fight against the looks and the comments that you just want to slap across the face as Sonia alluded to earlier and so to have Sonia's work so that is so accessible and exquisite at the same time yeah. um, in, in, a, in a place where it can be shared and accessed and celebrated and enlarge our understanding of infertility and of parenting a child with special needs is, is beautiful and extraordinary and very much necessary. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's perfect. Thank you, Addie. I love hearing you. I'm so glad that you said remind you <laughs> to come. So I'm so glad it's so know. nice of you to remind me. My postmenopausal brain uh, <laughs> get it. reminders, especially after four o'clock in the afternoon. I get it, but I'm really glad you're here. And that was so well, well put. Agreed. All right. Well, let's, uh, if there's no more questions, we have open mic and I do have uh, John and Joan, both written down for open mic. Did anybody else want to come on in and let me know if you, okay, Karen, I gotcha. All right, Jojo, we'll go to you first. Thank you so much, Sonia. Y'all want another round of applause? I know y'all do, I can feel it. Absolutely, <laughs> wow. Thanks. Oh, no, so I'm sorry, so I have to clap my cheek. <laughs> um, wow, that was like, I. To read after you seems wrong. <laughs> You're so good. Well, I picked I picked a prose poem because you you wrote prose poems, so I figured up. I mean, if that's okay, that's why I picked a prose poem because you 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 are your books prose. Uh, it's not it. Yeah, um, it's called the Black Art, and it's in five sections. So I say it's one through five. So I say one one. It all ended before it began. Like birth, I rose 
to a locked casket, claustrophobia seized my lungs. A twisted birthday where one woke at their funeral. The breathing complicated the way you're supposed to lie still. Two, somewhere in the middle, my fingers ached. My bones sounded like a music box, the instrument scantily defective. Three, I picked cotton from my navel. The more I proceeded, the more my stomach deflated. My ribs grew like branches that wrapped around the sky. My skin became the horizon. My eyes were celestial. My teeth asteroids. My brain a white hole. Four, I decorated my feet in ceremonial colors. Five, the black mimic night. It continuously immersed me. I closed my eyes and watched it like water filling the corners of my lips. I splinter my nails carving this letter describing how I gulped but could never drink enough to see light again. And that's that poem. Mm. That's wonderful. Wow. Thank you. Very good. You reminded me how Karen was saying, you always say, and that's that poem, <laughs> which I'm here. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, in my head, I'm like, how will they know it's ending? Because sometimes I pause too much before I read again. So I'm always like, okay, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> you can trust us. Sebastian just wrote the most lovely thing. I don't know if you already saw it, Stanya, but Sebastian, that is just lovely what you wrote in the chat section. That is just lovely. Thank you for that. And if y'all uh, did hear, he's one of John's friends and he is joining us from Turkey and it's 2 a.m. there. So Wow. But I love what you wrote about, um, I go to bed with sustenance to show up. It's just beautiful. He said, to me, there were no bummers here, Sonia. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Rolling in gratitude and beauty. That is awesome. Thank you for that. Um, Joan, I have you next. So if you say something, I can make you the spotlight. Okay, here I am. All right, we got you. Okay. Oh. Lost you. Hang on. Here we go. Physics. A rectangle, like a dining table, but a trick table, weighted at one end, like a seesaw, mother holding down the strong seat, boy and girl, like a fulcrum, locked in stasis. Father dangling from the high seat, denied gravity. It's a system like an experiment in force. Thank you, John. Thank I you. Appreciate that. It was good to hear you read it. It seems like it's been a couple of weeks. And Karen, last but not least, where are you? Here I am. Can you hear me? Yep, you're good. Oh. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, you're good. So, uh, oh, oh, now I'm huge. Okay, sorry about that, y'all. Hope it's not too terrifying. So um, this, is a, <laughs> this is a poem I wrote several years ago. It's, uh, it was in response to a painting by Ginger Earl, and it was the most beautiful painting, and daggone, I wish I had bought it, um, but I could still see it in my head. Anyway, uh, New Growth Song. What rogue wind has carried whispered breath enough to tell a tale inspired enough to settle deep into the soil, to stir a hold fast grasping, ripple up and out through wooden rings of years, through stoic bark, this wisp, this wink, this nod, this tender thing of spring, this wistful, winsome tendril, what wild dream is wishing birth? What wonder seeking such green glory simply in unfurling, in unfurling, simply singing, singing song? Yay. Wow, I always love it when you read. Oh, thank you. <laughs> was that Addie saying I always love it when you read? It was no, lovely. It was me. Oh, oh, Christy, thank you. I couldn't hear who it was. Thanks, Christy. <laughs> that was lovely. Thanks so much for those who did open mic. If there's anybody that's changed their mind and wants to jump in, you can do so. Um, well, I, I did want to... Uh, 
Thank you. Well, I wanted to read something about what Penny said. Um, Penny said, so sorry to be late. Equipment problems, plus my camera has bad audio. If I were to talk to you, I'd sound like a chipmunk. I kind of want to hear that, Penny. Yeah. Um, yes. If this is recorded, I'll enjoy hearing it later. And it will be recorded, and I will post it um, on Sonia's page and then also on the Facebook event page. And um, uh, and then Addie just read a second what Sebastian said about sustenance. Thank you, Sonia, Malika, and everyone. Um, and I, can I say something again? Duncan? Sonia, your poems, though, like, I don't know, I've said, um, they've left me broken. I'm here just crying. Wow. This is the thing. They're so powerful. Like, they're, they're just like, um, I don't even, like, words can even, even describe, like, just wow. Like, bow down. Yeah, they, like, this is, I mean, I mean, don't mean to be rude with anyone in the past if you're here like this is the first time i'm just sitting here crying and crying and usually poems don't hit me so hard like because i try to i mean it may sound horrible i try to detach myself because it's not me and every i mean i want to feel the emotion but they've just they've just like they just ran through my little walls and they're destroying me in a good way though <laughs> I, don't, I mean i just I just, I want to give you the most million compliments and I want to put it into words, but it won't. But just so, I just want your poems, your poems touch, like just, yeah. This is me hugging you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I listened to your poem and they, they, I don't, I guess this is a more, like I've been here like every week. This for me is like my personal little reading space. And so, like the first time I heard you, I didn't know anyone and everything, so I listened and everything. But here I'm like cozy and at home and more, I feel okay and stuff. And so, yeah, they just, they, they, yeah. And I want your book, but I don't have any money. So if one, one of these days, once I get money, I'll be able to buy it. So don't think I'm being rude with not purchasing it. Just broke. <laughs> we are broke. <laughs> But yeah, I just want to say thank you and 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 the way you read them and everything. They're just yeah, it is so much different having you know the author read them too. I I really enjoy yeah, that aspect. Melissa, do you want to hear the Oh, you read it, didn't you? Yeah. I read it. Penny, you sound like a robot. <laughs> I know, I know. I the usual computer, the output flow. The computer I usually use for Zoom, Zoom which is a friend that we have. I thought I would try mine, but then it's been a crazy. So I will listen to this clothing. Do I sound fit monkey? If you have <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, it is really hard to... It is really hard to understand, Penny. So I, I have Sonia's book, wonderful. Sonia's book, wonderful. Oh, you have Sonia's book, that's wonderful. I understood that. If you want to write it in the chat section, maybe that way would be an easy way to communicate. So if you have a question for Penny, you can put it in the chat section. I, that's so frustrating, because I could tell you, try to uh, hear every other word. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I'll give her a moment to see if she has any questions. And does anybody else have something they want to say? If not, we will, you know, end a little early. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Can I message you, Sonia, on like Facebook Messenger? Do you do that? Is that okay? Or what's that on? Um, may I Facebook mess like on Messenger? Like sure. Messenger? Yeah. We right. can... Yeah. I didn't know if you did that or not. I don't know if I ever. I try to message everyone, especially after reading and stuff. And I like talking and. But I just, I don't know. I, I wanted to ask if it was okay to message you. Sure. I mean, sometimes I get overwhelmed with just yeah, like, you, you think about the way it is today, right? Like you ha I have email and then I have mm -hmm. like t iMessage and then I've got messenger and then, but, but yeah, no, I mean, I know you now. So yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Like I try to talk to everyone. I'm a talker. I like talking. I don't get out, especially since COVID, I don't get out at all.
but before um, you know like zoom was my first poetry readings and everything but i like to i like the message codes but yeah and your poems yeah you're like worship you <laughs> like that was just yeah i have idols and like poets i love and and you've you've finally slid into the top area of of, and I don't mean no disrespect for no one else. Like, I love everyone's poems. My list is huge, but uh, it, it's ever-growing. And and like I said, I've been to your reading, and I've, I've, we're friends on Facebook, but we never really talk or whatever. But, yeah, you, yeah now I'm just like, yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> hey, could I ask one more question, Sonia? Sure. Um, I'm just curious. I, I love those poems so much, and I'm kind of just trying to figure out prose poems. And I'm not familiar with your work, and I'm so glad that I've discovered you thanks to this. Um, can you do you write other types of poems, or you is prose poem your 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 road that you're on? Or I'm I'm curious how you would switch between. I don't know. Just my, talk about that some. <laughs> my first book is all lineated, mostly. You know, I, I usually, when I write, I end up with a long column poem. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have, then I look at it for a little while and then decide whether a different form would, would suit it. But there was something about this, about letdown, that was particularly, um, where the prose poem was particularly just the right form yeah. for it. But most of my poems are are lineated, so yeah. If that, if that that's when you were when you were talking about the um, you know the, the nature, the topic kind of informed the, the the format because it really is a memoir in prose poems mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Yeah, it is. I want to thank it's you again. I'm going to head out. Really okay. glad Bye. to be here today. Nice Thanks to see so you much. again, Annie. Bye, Annie. Bye, Annie. Bye, bye. Um, there were some more compliments in in the uh, the ongoing chat section, so I'll make sure that I send that to you, Sonia, so that you can see uh, what people were saying in case you missed it. anything. I saw you. Oh, there's somebody waiting. So I, think I, I hope they didn't have the time uh, zone wrong. That's a hard one. Mm. So we'll give Robbie a moment. Um, we'll that one. I went to go to a reading and I had the time zone wrong and I caught the last two minutes of it. Mm -hmm. And it was one of my favorite poets and I was so upset and I messaged her and she said, there will be others, don't worry. And I was just like, ah, oh, I felt so stupid. <laughs> it's, it's easy to do right now. Thank you all so very much. And Thank Robbie, you. I, it was amazing. Goodbye, Sonia and Malika. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Addie. It was great. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sonia. And Elaine, it was so lovely to meet you. and. Um, glad other people could join us. Thanks, Penny. I'll have the recording up. And Robbie, I'm so sorry you're just getting here. We're actually um, closing. We're finishing up. So I hope it wasn't the time zone that threw you off. Um, but I will have a recording of Sonia's reading, which you do want to watch. It um, was the time zone that threw me off. Sorry. I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. well, I saw her yesterday on Wednesday night, Wednesday night poetry. So Right? Didn't it just make you want to be here? Bye. But don't, we do have a recording. So, um, well, if I can tell you anyway that I'm going to be featuring uh, at Westwood Public Library on Zoom on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So it's 9 p.m. Eastern. And you can figure out the other time zones. And I would love to have you. There's an open mic as well. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, thanks for letting us know about it. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I sent Sonia, I sent you one. I sent I sent Penny one. So an uh, in invitation. So you guys can post it and other people can come. Okay. Great. All right. I'm sorry I missed you. Well, well I'm, that's okay. Nice to see you. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Too. And the northern lights. Or at least half of my head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If I do a backdrop, I lose pieces of myself. I'm like, that is unnerving. I can't have that. But if I don't do it, then you see my shoes and my closet with stuff hanging. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sorry you weren't here, Robbie, earlier, because I think we would have had a lot of fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, All right, guys. You, be well. 
Sonia, thank you again so much. All right. That was really Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Um, and I will email you all the um, the tapes and stuff like that, the video. Thank you. And I think, I think it's uh, dinner time now. It's dinner time on in Central, the Central Zone. Well, we just yeah, finished. So I out pizza so quick. <laughs> we just finished because we eat early because I made crab and corn cakes. So. Oh, oh yeah. Lord, that sounds delicious.